with us. Give it up for Corbin McDavid! Thirsty Hippo, how's everybody doing tonight? God damn, you are so beautiful. I'm so happy you all are here. Um, I work at a grocery store and I'm a cashier and I have this boss that likes to ask me these really inappropriate and vulgar questions. And so one day I'm ringing up some canned goods with a customer and she comes up to me and she says, Call Ben! You have a smelt black pussy. <laughs> and I stopped, I'm like, what kind of power move is this bitch pulling? I don't remember this on the application. Did I miss this on the questionnaire? I don't know if I strongly agree or disagree with, have I ever smelled black pussy? And so I like to like shoot it back at her. I'm like, yes, Amy. I know what black pussy smells like. Hell, I love the smell of black pussy. I actually captured the scent and put it in a Glade air freshener spray can. I spray that shit in my room and confuse my friends. <laughs> hey, Corbin, is that fresh linens? No, baby, that's black pussy. <laughs> that was the first joke I ever wrote when I was 19 years old at the Thirsty Hippo, uh, and it's still my mom's favorite, so. <laughs> So tomorrow, uh, I, I gave up drinking, and tomorrow marks my first full week of sobriety. Yes, and you know what? I feel so much better. I've lost 10 pounds in all of my friends, but damn, this clear mind I have. Um, so let me tell you about the first AA meeting I ever went to. Uh, I went to my first AA meeting at a church and the median age was 85. And there's this guy there, he's like, he looks like an old guy, whatever. And so uh, he says that his first AA meeting was in Macomb, Mississippi. That's his home group. My dad, my grandfather, and my uh, uncle were all alcoholics and went through AA. And so he says, uh, he's talking about the railroads. When my grandfather worked on the railroads in Macomb. I'm like, well, certainly this dude knows who my grandfather was. And so I'm like, hey, did you know my grandfather, Jerry McDavid? And he says, oh, Jerry, he was the best sponsor AA has ever had. When there were men that would get drunk and beat their wives and kids, he would break into their house and beat the shit out of them. <laughs> And I was like, that's badass. I mean, I just get blackout, you know, in my carport, listen to Drake and snort Adderall, but hey, glad to know I got a legacy. <laughs> so, um, there, there are a lot of people in this state that are always up in arms and defending Mississippi. They're like, you know, we're not the, the racist, overweight, homophobic, bigoted state that everyone in the media makes us out to be. We've got arts, we've got culture, we're the birthplace of music. And I used to be one of those people until last Wednesday. <laughs> I was leaving my hometown of Laurel, Mississippi, where dreams go to get pregnant. <laughs> and I was returning back to the promised land of Hattiesburg. And I see as I'm getting on the interstate, there's a sign at a restaurant that says, try our new Slim Jim flatbread sandwich, $6.99. That sounds like the only item you can get at the concession stand at an Insane Clown Posse concert. <laughs> and there's no pictures, nothing, just letters on a white background. And I'm like reading it, I'm like, Slim Jim, okay, that's gross. Flatbread sandwich, how does that work? $6.99, the fuck? $6.99 for a Slim Jim flatbread sandwich. The only way I would pay for that is if it's like a flatbread and in between there's a Slim Jim beef stick and $5. That's the only way. <laughs> That's the most Mississippi shit I've ever seen in my entire life. The only way you could make that more Mississippi is if you took a picture of Brett Favre in a Packers uniform hurling Slim Jim flatbread sandwiches into Morgan Freeman's mouth. Like, that's the only way. You remember a couple of months back when some doctors and scientists cured AIDS in a baby and everyone was like, Woo, give it up for Mississippi. We done cured the queer out of that baby. 
It doesn't matter, because that baby's gonna grow up and eat a Slim Jim flatbread sandwich. <laughs> Which is probably worse for you than AIDS. <laughs> so I started drinking when I used to work at a Cracker Barrel. <laughs> And, um, and so, like, if you've never been, how many of you, just raise your hands if you have never been to a Cracker Barrel. The whole goddamn room has depression? <laughs> this is an intervention, okay. If you, so you, you guys know what a Cracker Barrel is. It's basically like if Duck Dynasty and Waffle House opened up a nursing home, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what a Cracker Barrel is. Seriously, you should have seen some of these old people I would take care of. I'm looking at them, I'm like, there's no fucking way this is not your last meal. There's no way. I have a bunch of veterans come into Cracker Barrel, uh, Civil War veterans. <laughs> I see him walking through the gift shop. I'm like, sir, do you realize you're leaking from all of the pores in your body? I'm not cleaning that shit up, Malcolm. I use the name Malcolm because if you're over the age of 70, your name is Malcolm, okay? I read a census. I know what I'm talking about. But, um, so I, uh, so this is a true story. Um, so one day, it's a Sunday afternoon, and I'm working at Cracker Barrel, and we are just slammed. And there's a family of 20, mom, dad, aunts, uncles, grandkids, they're all there. And grandma is pushing 90 years old, and she is playing checkers in the rocking chair inside the restaurant with her grandkids, and she just fucking died. <laughs> Just out cold. And so my manager notices she's unresponsive and goes over and like checks her pulse. He thinks she's dead. The poor grandkids are like, Grandma, Grandma, wake up. Grandma, wake up. And so now my manager has to go over to this family of 20 and be like, something's happened to this woman. The whole family of 20 gets up and goes and sees this woman. They're crying hysterically. The paramedics get the arrive and they confirm she is dead. And then they put her on a stretcher and then wheel her away with the white, white cloth, everything. So this poor woman has died in a Cracker Barrel, which is like a wet dream if you're from Petal, Mississippi. <laughs> I'm sorry. Must have been pretty traumatic for the family, right? Here's the thing. When grandma got to the hospital, she came back to life. And I know this because the very next week, she came back into Cracker Barrel and went out of her way to go up to my manager and say, you remember me from last week? I was the lady that died. What do you say to that sort of thing? Like, there's no amount of corporate training that can prepare you for a goddamn miracle. You know what I'm saying? We all thought this woman was dead. Hell no, she went full Uma Thurman and Kill Bill and was like, I'm going back into Cracker Barrel for some reconciliation and hash brown casserole. My manager, though, had the worst reaction in the history of anything. He just looks at her and goes, Huh. Huh. Hey, I'm sorry, are you not blown away by the resurrection of Grandma Jesus? This is... I'm getting my life together because of this, bro. Now, that makes for a great story, but it makes for an even greater Yelp review. <laughs> I rate Cracker Barrel Old Country Store four out of five stars. Pros, the food was hot and fresh and the service was excellent. Cons, I fucking died. <laughs> Didn't ever think I'd come back. All right guys, my name's Corbin McDavid. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>